Hi, I'm Katherine Kasdorf, Associate Curator of Arts of Asia and the Islamic World at the Detroit Institute of Arts. Within the Asian collection at the DIA, we have a number of wonderful objects related to no, a classical form of Japanese theater. They include sumptuous robes, gold-flecked lacquered objects like the drum on this screen, and a dramatic mask with the power to terrify audiences when enlivened by a practiced actor. Now, those of you who have visited the DIA's Gallery of Japanese Art might remember that one section is dedicated to no theater. In addition to works from the collection, there's a video showing no objects in action created specifically for our gallery. You can also watch that video online. In this video, I'm going to speak more about the no theater objects in the DIA's collection. I'll also provide a little context about the history and practice of no. The Japanese word no translates to talent, ability, or technique. It refers especially to the actor's ability to portray their characters effectively. The stories of no plays often focus on characters like demons, ghosts, monsters, and other supernatural beings. Actors use movement and gesture to build the mood of a particular scene. Sometimes they move very slowly and deliberately, creating moments of stillness that might be filled with tension or alternately with calm. In other moments, they move quickly and vigorously, stomping their feet on the stage with great energy. Musicians, which you can also see in this photograph, sit around the periphery of the stage, some of them playing instruments like the hand drum or flute and others chanting. Their music is an integral part of the drama, Together with the actors, the sound they make creates the mood of each scene. No stages are relatively simple in appearance and sets are minimal. It is the actors and musicians who create the setting through sound, movement, and costume. The form of the stage is codified so that most no stages look similar to this one at the National No Theater in Tokyo. The stage is built of cedar wood and a stylized pine tree is painted on the backdrop an allusion to the traditional outdoor setting of no theater. Some no stages are still outside, but many, like this one, are built indoors. There's no curtain to close off the stage from the audience, but a striped multicolored curtain separates the performance space from backstage, and you can see the curtain on the photo's left. When the main actors emerge, they walk through this curtain onto a long walkway, which they must traverse before arriving at the main stage. The simple backdrop of the stage helps focus attention on the actors who are at the heart of the drama. No developed into the form we know today in the 1300s. Then, and in the centuries that followed, it was a popular art form among Japan's ruling classes and members of the elite sponsored no theater groups and donated the richly adorned robes, instruments, and other objects that they used in their plays. No theater has remained popular, and today it reaches an even wider audience than it once did. And while traditionally only men acted in no drama, playing female characters as well as men and various types of supernatural beings, that's beginning to change. And today, women may also train as no actors. So now let's talk a little bit more about the specific no objects at the DIA. Our no mask presents us with a being that looks somewhat human, but not quite. Its eyes, nose, cheeks, chin, eyebrows, and hair are all quite human-like, but the short horns growing from its head and the terrible fangs revealed by its wide open mouth suggest more of a supernatural character. This mask was actually made for a very specific type of role called namanari, depicting a woman in the process of becoming a demon. In this role, the woman's husband has betrayed her, leaving her for someone else, and she turns into a demon-like being called an oni in order to take revenge on him. An actor wearing this mask could tilt it at different angles to create subtly different expressions, some of them especially menacing or spooky. Here are some photos of the mask in a different light. You can see what an impact light and shadow have on its appearance. You can also see the delicately painted hair in the profile shots. And there's a subtle gleam on the horns, eyes, teeth, and fangs. 
That's because these elements are lined in copper. Just imagine the effect these metallic elements would have on a stage lit by candles and lanterns. They enhance the mask's already dramatic appearance. Now these photos you might notice also show the mask resting on an orange cloth. That cloth is used to wrap the mask when it's not in use. Masks are the most precious items of no theater and they're treated with great respect, being handled and stored with the utmost care. The DIA also has a beautiful no mask box in its collection. Made of fine lacquered wood adorned with gold imagery, this box is quite the luxury item. One of those wealthy no fans must have donated it to their favorite theater company in the 1600s when it was made. Its imagery conveys wishes for happiness and longevity. In this view, we see chrysanthemums, butterflies, bamboo, and cranes, all well-known symbols in Japanese culture that bring the viewer good blessings. Another beautifully lacquered no object in the DIA's collection is this small hand drum. Actually, it's the core of a hand drum, and to function as an instrument, it would have been fitted with stretched leather discs on each end, like this one at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. The DIA's hand drum core, like the mask box, is an object of high luxury. In addition to its gold imagery, which depicts a bird flying amid plum blossoms, it features more abstract areas of gold dust that the artist sprinkled onto the wet lacquer to create a shimmering, misty appearance. Now, the last type of no object in the DIA's collection are robes. Many of these also feature metallic elements that would have shimmered beautifully on stage as the actors wearing them moved around. Not all of them would have been fully visible, however. On stage, a no actor wears multiple layers of robes to appear larger than life, and some of the DIA's robes were actually intended to serve as inner layers. This painting, which illustrates a no performance and dates to the early 1700s, shows the layering of the actor's costumes. The layers are especially apparent in the figure with the gauzy green outer robe. His inner robe, which is orange with gold accents, is only partly visible. The DIA has a similarly gauzy outer robe, which would have, been, which would have partly revealed the inner robe worn beneath. Called a choken, its sleeves are extremely long and wide, also like the robe in the painting. The metallic circles on its surface appear dark today, but they once would have been more silver in color, shining perhaps like moonlight on water. Another DIA robe, known as a surihaku, is similar in type to the inner robe that this figure wears. The scholar Joyce Denny made this comparison in her article on no costumes at the DIA. Like the gold accents on the figure's inner robe, this robe's beautiful design of camellias in, go in gold and silver would have only been partially visible on stage. Once in a while, however, the inner robe might be more fully revealed if an actor chooses to open the outer robe for dramatic effect, as the figure on the left side of this painting is doing. Some of the DIA's robes, like this one, might have served as inner or outer robes. This one features a beautiful woven pattern of wisteria roundels against a backdrop of hexagons, each with a flower at its center. This repeated hexagon pattern is associated with longevity because it's thought to resemble a tortoise shell, and tortoises, of course, are famously long-lived. A second robe at the DIA also features a hexagon pattern. Amid the hexagons, we also see swirling clouds and what appear to be portions of wagon wheels. These half wheels have been, have been a popular motif for centuries, and they actually represent wheels submerged in water. That's because historically, people would keep wooden ox cart wheels in rivers to prevent them from cracking. This robe's imagery and bright colors give it perhaps a more lighthearted character. Submerged wagon wheels, in fact, are also a popular motif for costumes of a related theater genre called kyogen. Now, no plays tend to be quite serious and dramatic, so in a full program, no acts are often interspersed with shorter, more humorous kyogen plays. One of the DIA's costumes, a type of jacket called a suo, was made for kyogen performances. It features a resist-dyed pattern of butterflies with adorable googly eyes and curling snouts. Now the final no robe in the DIA's collection also features butterflies, although they're depicted less humorously. 
The delicately woven butterflies flitting about in chrysanthemums and autumn grasses might remind you of something else we've already looked at. The mask box with its beautiful gold on lacquer design. As I mentioned a few moments ago, the motifs of butterflies and chrysanthemums convey wishes for happiness and longevity. And that is what I would like to leave you with today. May you all be happy and healthy now and long into the future. Thank you. <laughs>